I've been dancing since I was really little. I, I've taken classes intermittently, but really I mostly learned just from sneaking downstairs when I was little, watching my mom practice in the living room. My mom is a, is a Middle Eastern dancer, and she's fantastic, and you can find many more videos of her on YouTube than you can find of me. I'm a little biased, but I think she's great. Her stage name is Sabine, so look that up. There you so go. when people see the dance you do, people typically call it belly dancing. And it is belly dance. Um, but saying I belly dance is like saying I speak a foreign language, like that's really cool, which one? So there's a whole bunch of different styles, you could do Turkish, you could do Egyptian, you could do Middle Eastern, you could do American tribal style. Officially there's copyright reasons why I say that I can't, that I, that I can't say that I do American tribal style, but I do a dance that's really similar to American tribal style <laughs> dance. Basically draws from Egyptian and Middle Eastern dance, uh, flamenco, classical Indian, Turkish, and uh, North African style dance. I specifically learned improvisational style, uh, an improvisational style of dance, and so you'll have a group of dancers, two to twenty, uh, if you have a big enough stage, <laughs> dancing at one time, and there'll be not a specific leader, but there will be a lead position, and whoever's in that position is directing the dance. You can use different movements to switch out of that position or to transfer the lead to someone else. Everyone's following the leader. You're using very small body cues, a flick of the wrist or a lift of the arm, a turn of the head to tell people exactly what you're going to do in the next beat of the music. So it definitely keeps you on your toes. Um, and it's a little terrifying to lead because you're making it up as you go. You don't have a choreography. Um, but at the same time, if you know that about the dance and you're watching it, it's really impressive to watch. And it's, it's a lot of fun to participate in. Mm. Costume like the dance is a mixture. Um, it draws from a lot of different cultures. Um, so from the bottom to the top of the costume, um, Practicality-wise, I like to wear sandals when I'm dancing. Maybe someone before me did a dance with sequins. I don't know. Uh, you can wear anklets uh, for look or for sound. Everything jingly, please. Yes, please. Thank you. Dancers wear really colorful pantaloons underneath uh, wide skirts, usually um, Turkish spin skirts, um, just to give it a flash of color and to really make it the dance pop when uh, the dancers are doing tight turns together. Tassel belts were inspired by the camel tassels of uh, that decorate the homes of the Bedouin people of North Africa, or the Bedouin people and the Tuareg people of North Africa. And just adding more and more layers on the hips emphasizes the hips um, and underlines the torso, which is a source of power in the dance. So to cover the chest, uh, dancers typically wear a choli, which is a classical top from India. Cholis can be worn plain. Um, usually they're pretty colorful on their own, or they have mirrors embedded in them. Um, but you can also wear a coin bra over the top. Um, coin bras are from the Uld nail dancers of North Africa who would wear their wealth on their bodies to keep it safe, because they didn't have banks. Um, and then it also became known as a status symbol, so really excellent dancers would have uh, lots of coin jewelry to wear. Tribal markings on the face. They're inspired by the Berber people of North Africa, um, who has, they have unique facial tattoos which can tell about a person's status, tribe, and family unit. And so in a similar fashion, um, the markings on my chin, uh, which was like a line, two little lines coming off mm -hmm. of it, indicated uh, my family, uh, so my mom, when she dances, has the same markings on her chin, and then the two dots by my eyes symbolize uh, my status in our family tribe, and my mom has three dots because she's the elder, and I have two dots because I'm learning from her. And lastly, head wraps are used in many Middle Eastern cultures. Uh, similar to a crown, it just kind of gives the wearer a feeling of power, and it makes me more aware of my posture, it helps me stand up really tall. So head wraps also provide a practical element. Um, if you're doing a sword dance or a basket dance, it'll help provide a little bit of grip. And of course, a costume wouldn't be complete without lots of jewelry, which is the best part and the part that takes the longest for me. Like decorating your turban with flowers or coins, ornaments dangling down on, onto your belly. This lovely necklace. A dancer can also dance with zills, which are finger symbols. Uh, usually zills will be on the middle and middle finger and thumb, and so dancers will be able to dance while zilling, which is really cool. Anything else you want to say to the wonderful people watching at home? Hello, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Support your dancers, because 
they're uh, they're really cool and I bet you didn't know this but there's probably a Middle Eastern dance group somewhere near you they pop up in very strange places Nebraska has a really strong dance movement right now so I'm gonna put up the link to the other video if you haven't watched it yet or if you've already watched it and want to watch it again or, uh, you can go do that and I encourage you to do that because it's pretty cool Right, so that's basically it. Um, you can click I think, basically anywhere on the screen and it'll take you to the other video. Um, you should go watch that now because we don't have anything else, you know, planned to do. Yeah, just go ahead and click on the screen. Anywhere's good.